right way. I can say, I hope we're the right way. Okay, let's sing something. I will do it. It's just, I'm going to do it one more time. I think you put it sideways. Oh, oh, hi. No, we're ready to go. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we've been working for like a half an hour already trying to get uh, technology to kind of be where we need it to be for this class. So we're going to be doing a yoga bar class, I think, eventually here. And yoga bar is a combination of the philosophies between um, yoga, many, 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 and it's really accented into the bar. And bar was really launched, as most of you uh, are aware of this, from philosophy around dance and ballet. And dance and ballet not only lengthens the muscles, they work with flexibility and strength. And because of a lot of the leg work that they do, it really isolates and tones the lower portion of the body, especially around the butt, glutes, and hips. So it's really great for toning the legs and the glutes, uh, but also they've implemented things um, like light weights and movement for the upper body. So you're gonna get a complete body workout working the core as well. Your teacher today is Corin, uh, Corin, Corin. She's, that's a new, new, new name for, she also goes by Karen. Or Corin, whatever, whatever you wanna go by. Uh, and without further ado, we'll begin our class today. All right guys, hi, how are you today? So today we're gonna do a bar class, and I want you to maybe have a couple of, uh, Light weights, those are two pounds. If you don't have any weights at home, you can do any bottle waters, cans, anything you can have, or no weights, or up to five pounds is good as well. And I'm also going to use a yoga block, or if uh, you can use a towel, or a children's ball will work as well. And we're going to get started. So, first, we're going to start with a warm up. I want you to bring your feet hip distance apart. Your heels are going to be in, your toes are going to be turned out. And I just want you to bring your arms up. And down and it, think about them like our um, sun salutes um, look sunflowers moon flowers inhale bring your arms up and down just start to warm up and while you're doing this I want you to be sure your core is engaged you want to draw your belly in and I want you to tell one down to lengthen your spine let's do this one more time and from here I want you to bring your arms down to the side of the body and bring the back up and round like on a cut stretch inhale forward exhale roll in as you sink down on your hips, you're opening your hips. Inhale forward, exhale back. Roll your shoulders back. And continue to do this. Let's do this for three more times. Two, and after this one, you're gonna stay down. And when you stay down, I want you to bring your shoulders to your knee and stretch the other side. And let's go side to side. So we're opening the hips, drawing the belly in, stretching the back and shoulders. And let's keep going for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Bring it forward, roll up, bring your arms to the side. This is a second position of plie. And now I want you to turn into a lunge. So you're gonna go forward and back. Notice how I'm gonna rotate my hips. So I'm rotating my hips all the way to the front. Coming in the toes, bringing it on a lunge. Keep going like this, plie. Lunge, sink low. Two more times, and you're gonna start facing this way on the lunge. Now bring your arms up and bring your legs up and down. So keep both knees by 90 degrees, and you're gonna feel your hip flexor right on the front. While you're bending your knee, be sure your knees align with your toes. Relax your shoulders down, lift up your heart. Two more, and stay here for little pulses and pulse. Pulse, pulse, pulse for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Bring your arms to the side of the body and you can bring them to your hips as well. We're gonna try to balance back into the leg and bring your toes up. Lift your leg up, pointing your toes. Feel the lengthening on the back of this leg. And let's bring the arms up, maybe to balance up. Eight more times, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, pause here, our best. Bring your arms up and over to the center. Plie, and now we switch sides. Plie, and rotate, sink, lower. Again, this back foot, I want you to use your toes. When you're rotating, your hips rotate the other way. Look at your front knee. Be sure your knees align with your toes right above your ankle. And keep going like this. Okay. And close, open. So these are dance moves, and we're dancing and flowing. 
four, three, two. You're gonna stay on this side and now bring your arms up, bring your shoulders down. Go up and down, reach, lower. Keeping both knees at 90 degrees and draw the belly in. Your tailbone is down, shoulders relax. Up, down, four more times, three, two, and I want you to stay here and pulse, 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 and four, three, two, get ready to bring your arms down to the side, or maybe your hips to balance, and let's go up, down, point your toes, lengthen the back leg, your standing leg is straight and strong. You can always bring your arms up if you want to. Try different ways with your arms. Maybe the arms can go back on the airplane. Four more times. Bring your shoulders back. Lift up your heart. Two. And from here, I want you to come back to center, back into the second position. Bend your knees. Bring your arms up. And now this time, I want you to stretch your hips up and down, drawing your belly in. And now feel that back extension when your arms are up. Your tailbone goes down. Now, staying here, you're going to move only the arms, only the upper body. You stay in a big squat or plie. Bring your arms up, down, reach, four, three, two. Now, all together, up, down, warming up your whole body. Keep going like this. Four more times. Three, two, hold it here. Reach, 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 and then lower down. Stretching the back of the legs, your hands are down, bend your knees and extend. Bend and extend. You continue with that turn up. Your feet are, um, they're wide apart, but they're not super wide apart, just like maybe two to three inches, two to three feet apart. Oh, you go like this. Two, and now stay here for little pulses. Notice how your hips are stretching. Three, two, one. Now stretch your legs and just melt the front of the bottom and top of your legs. Feel the stretch on your hamstrings. Draw your belly in. Walk towards one of your one of your feet. Right or left, it doesn't matter. And then you're gonna walk to the other side. And now that we're warmed up, we're gonna move into the arms. And when we work the arms, we're also gonna be working the legs and the core. So going back to center, slowly roll up, one breath at a time. Bring your shoulders back, bring your arms up. And now bring your arms down to the side. All right, so go ahead and grab your uh, light weights. Like I said, you can use anything that you have at home. Um, your heels are gonna be together, toes turn out in first position, your tailbone goes down, your belly goes up and in, your shoulders go down. And I want you to bring your arms just right above shoulder height. And notice how my elbows are bent slightly. While I'm doing this, I'm not just working my arms. My whole body's working because I'm engaging my core. I'm lengthening my spine. My inner thighs are squeezing towards each other. My quads are engaged, hamstrings, glutes. And now as we move with the arms, we can start lifting the heels up too in a roll of eight. Up and down. Reach. Lower. And think about ballet arms. So my arms are slightly round, like a dancer. My fingers are soft. You go on like this. Four more times. Three, two. Now I'm gonna stay on my toes, bring my palms up, and then down. Up, down, reach up. Keep going up and down. Reach and lower. Now, if it's too much to be on your toes, you can always bring your heels down. Try to stay in your toes and squeeze your thighs in together while you lift your belly up and in, your tailbone goes down. So feel the core engage and the back stretching and extending up. Two more. Breathe. And one more time. Now I want you to bring your heels down as you keep your arms on the side of the body. And now we're gonna make little circles. When you're doing the circles, feel your shoulder blades come in together. Bring your palms up. Continue to engage your core the whole time. 
and little tiny circles. You can even do this without weights. Let's do four more times. Three, two, now reverse your circles. And again, squeezing the shoulder blades in towards each other and relaxing your shoulders down away from the ears, keeping the core nice and tight. Let's go for four, three, two, one. Now bring your arms down to the side of the body. And now when you bring your palms in and out, as you look at my feet, they're coming out and in. So you're rotating your hips. So you're only doing a few of this ones. Three, two, and now stay here in first position. Bend your knees and your arms are gonna come up. And I want you to alternate bicep curls while you do a little feet lias. And I want you to think like if you were squeezing something between your knees and take a look at your knees and be sure they're not covering your toes. So right now you're sitting back. There's a tiny chair, but your heels are together and your toes are up. Keep squeezing the knees towards each other like you're squeezing a ball between them. And we're gonna come into a pause. So the arms are gonna move together and the legs are gonna stay still. Extend and squeeze. Try to keep your arms right underneath shoulder height. Keep your core engaged. Stay here strong with me. Breathe. Keep going like this. Four more times. Three, two, now I want you to stretch up again on first position, bring your arms back and do some tricep extensions while your back is stretching. Squeeze your thighs in towards each other. Maybe come up in your tippy toes again and lift up. Go slow. Just be sure that when you're bending your elbows, you're framing the sides of your head. Go slow for two more. And we're gonna go back down. As you come on back down, you're bending your knees. Now your arms are gonna go back. And tricep extension, as you can see, I still have my knees away from the toes when I bend and my belly in the back is extending and reach forward. You can go slow, you can go fast. Just think about keeping the shoulders away from the ears at all times and feeling all the muscles on your back. Two, now stay here, bring your palms up and your palms are gonna come up and down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, one more again. Feel the lats, the muscles of the side of the body. You go for four, three, two, hold it up. The last part, we're gonna make little tiny circles in. While your knees are bent, you can try to go lower. Keep your core engaged. Your tailbone goes down. And now reverse your circles. Little tiny movements. And let's go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now let go of the arms, bring your knees in together. This is hug a treat. So my knees are together, maybe hip distance apart, just like in a chair pose. I want you to pretend you're sitting in a little tiny chair behind you. While your elbows are bent, squeeze the shoulder blades in. Pretend you're hugging a big tree, a round big tree. Now you're gonna feel this in your quads as well. Hamstrings and quads and glutes. We're half the way there. And let's go for eight more. Two more. Now I want you to stay down and I want you to do little pulses. Pulse, pulse. Bringing the elbows back, squeezing between your shoulder blades. And let's go. Stay low for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now let it go. Stretch your back. Circle your arms. Stretch the back of the legs. And then you're going to circle the arms the other way. 
I want you to roll up slowly. One breath at a time, drawing your belly in, bringing your shoulders back, coming to a second position, heels in, toes out, and your arms are gonna go out to the side. So I'm gonna bend my knees and I'm gonna open my arms. And I like to circle the hands like if I was gonna open a door or pull the ropes to the side. So I'm bringing the elbows in and sinking low. And plie. So when we're working in the back, we're working all the little muscles on our back and our arms. Good job, keep going. Keep an eye on your knees, be sure they're not covering your toes. Keep your core engaged. Let's do this a couple more times. And then we're gonna stay down for a little pulses. And pulse, pulse. And keep moving your hands like me. You're circling, moving your wrists and your hands. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three. You're gonna hold your arms to your jump rope, little jump rope. Now bring one heel up, just one heel up. Four, three, two, get ready to switch sides. The other heel comes up and you reverse the circles. And we're gonna do it one more time on each side. So switch again. Keep your chest lifted and proud. You're out straight the whole time. And now let's switch again. Last time, keep going. So now we're moving into legs and arms and abs at the same time. Four, three, two. Now bring your arms to center. From here, we're gonna go into a curtsy lunge. So we're gonna go into curtsy, plie. Curtsy, plie. We're gonna add the arms, biceps and triceps, biceps and triceps biceps and triceps, keep going up and back, front, back. So you're gonna get a little bit more cardio from this movement. Sink, up and back. Ooh. Four more times, three, two. Now stay here and we switch. Sides, just like this, biceps, triceps. Seeing close, try not to cheat when you come back to center. Keep going, great job. And stay strong with your arms, so even though they're lightweight, I want you to avoid swinging the arms and really concentrate on the muscles and the slow movement with control. We're gonna put this together. So we got one more here. Now we're gonna go to the right, one side, and then the other side. And right now we're making a very simple movement with the arms, but that can always change. So we're gonna start to add a variation for this. Let's do two. Now, I want you to bring your arms to the side and then open and close. And keep moving into this cursive plie. All right. Don't stop. Four more times. Three. I'm gonna add something else. So now, when I go back to this side, I'm gonna to try to go towards the ground. One arm goes up, one arm goes down. Go slow, back, center, up. Great job. Up. These cursive lunges are really good for our inner thighs. Four more, three, Two, you're gonna stay on this side now. And now when you're here, bring your arm up and extend your arms down, up, down, up, down, up. Keep going like this. Both arms are working. Two, and now just come up with the arms. Instead, bring them up 
and down and stretch up, down, reach. Bring your elbows back. Two more. And now stay here. When you stay here, the back leg is gonna go in a kick. You're gonna try to balance and kick. Balance, kick. So you can just hold your weight right now. Good job. We're gonna do eight more of this once. Six. Five, four, three, two, last one. Now we gotta switch sides. Just like we did on the other side, we work this curtsy down, extending the arms up, down. So you're gonna feel the obliques here. This arm goes up, you feel your tricep. The other one, you're gonna feel more of your biceps. Your core is engaged at all times. Good job. Four, three, two. Now I'm gonna bring the arms up, my back straight up, down. Bring your arms up, elbows back. Lengthen. Good job. And then we're from here, we're gonna add the kicks on this side as well. Two. Last one, stay down here. You can bring your arms together and your curtsy and your kick. Curtsy, kick, curtsy, kick. And now here you're gonna test your balance because sometimes you feel like you're gonna fall and that's okay. Try your best, engage your core, keep your shoulders down. Stay in control, focus. Point your toes, kick, curtsy, kick. Four more times, three, two, last one. Now, with your legs uh, wide apart, we're gonna go into a side lunge and a row. So I'm gonna use both dumbbells on one hand, and I'm gonna go up and back, down, back. So now we're moving differently on the side lunge. Go back and down. Keep your core engaging and shoulders back. Two more times on this one, and we're gonna stay down for little pulses. So stay down and pulse. So just bring the elbow back and feel it on the side of the body. All the good stuff. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, bring it down, turn around, and now you're gonna be on a lunge and row this way. Now you can also have both hands with both, like you can use both ways if you wanna do it this way, or you can stay with one arm at the same time. Great job. Two. And then stay here on the lunge, bring your arms up and down. Just hold your arms up, surrender, bring your shoulders down. Great up. So we're working our legs on the lunges, you can tell your glutes, your abs, your arms. From here, we're gonna lower down, slowly, calm on down. You can use the weights for support. A standing leg, the other leg's gonna come up and down, straight up and down, and up. So you can bend your knees slightly. Keep your core engaged, keep your hips square. Four more times, three, two, and then that little pulses, pulse, little arbus pulses, point your toes, lengthen. Both legs are straight or straighter. In four, three, two. Now bring this leg down. Roll up. Now we're gonna do the other side. <laughs> so again, both weights in one hand. Start with your legs wide apart. You're gonna bend the knee in the side lunge 
and row. Back, yeah, back. We're definitely sweating here, so I hope you're too. <laughs> Go back, down. Bring your elbows back. Feel that side stretch on your lunge. Stay strong with your core. And get ready for some small pulses. And we go down to pulse. And keep the elbows up. But feel it on the side of the body. Keep your shoulder back away from your ear. Keep your core engaged. Try to go low. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now we're going to let it go. Turn around to a lunge. And again, we're going to lunge. Now bending the back knee. Shoulders back, chest is lifted. Good job. And notice how we're moving the arms. So they go in a small circle back. Eight more times. Four, three, two. Get ready to bring your arms up with the knees and the lunge. Bring your arms up. Surrender, shoulders back, just keep your arms straight. Lifting up your heart. Feel your back expanding. Keep your core engaged. Be sure your hips are level. So the leg that is forward, you're going to have your hips slightly back. And the leg that, the leg that is back, your hip is forward. Almost there. Two more. And last one. Now we're going to transition down. Both hands down. You can use the weight to knot and stand your legs straight. Our best case. Lift and lower. Point your toes up. Try to keep both legs straight, hips square. We're almost there. Lengthen. You can go as slow as it feels good. You don't need the weights. Two more. Now get ready to pull. And little pulses. Pull, pull, pull. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other to square your hips. For four, three, two. Now bring this leg down. You can hug your feet together. Bend the knees if that feels good. And I want you to step out on a plank. Coming into a plank, we're going to do core control. So you're going to bring your shoulders back, drop your hips, strong on the core. You're going to bend one knee, but don't let it drop. And then bring it all the way in. So it's not a mountain climber. You're just flipping your toes in a strong plank. So this is a good stretch for our feet. And it's working our core. You can go faster or slower. And we'll just do a few more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last one. Back into your plank. Lift your hips up and back and stretch in the down dog, sinking between the shoulders. Send the hips up and away and bend the right knee, pressing with the left heel down. And then you can switch sides and walk your dog if you like. Just stretching the back of the legs. And sink. And on your next inhale, you can bend the knees, coming with your heels up. Bend the knees, come into a small child's pose. We're going to get up in just a second, but I want you to stretch your hips and your arms forward. And then you slowly come on up. Rounding the back. Tap your toes in, press back. This time, walk to your feet slowly and start to roll up one breath at a time. Bring your shoulders back. Bring your arms up, reach. Good job. So now we're going to move into using the bar, and you at home you can use a chair or a table or anything that you can use to support your hands. So we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to take the weight of my new block. I'm gonna have you sideways first and then we're gonna turn around. 
All right, so from second position again, this is second position. Your knees are turned out, follow the toes. You can have one arm on the bar, be sure your shoulders back, your abs are in. You're going to plie. And now this arm is going to follow. You're going to open and close. The combination is going to be plie, second position to first. And I'm going to add a kick and I'm going to add an attitude as well. So start here warming up. Two more times. And I want you to stay here for pulses and pulse. Pulse, drawing your belly in, tailbone down, shoulders back. Four, three, two, pause, bring your heels up. And now down, up, down. Now this time both heels come up. Up, down, down. Press with the balls of your feet. Two more. And I want you to keep your heels up and little pulses up and down. Reach lower. Now feel your glutes, but also feel the muscles that go around your leg, your hamstrings, your inner thighs. Almost there. Two, one. Now press with the heels down. Open from second to first. Now we seal the thighs in together. Same. So more cardio again. Good job. Open the arm. And now that we don't have a weight, you're loosening up your shoulder. You can move your arm around. I like to move my hand like if it was a butterfly or a flower. Four more times. Three. We're going to add the attitude. So we go from second to attitude. Second to attitude. Second, attitude lift. Now my knees bend, my toes are pointed down. My knees turn up. The lower you go, the harder you work it. So come up. Down and up. Reach. Lift. You got four more. Three. Two. Now hold it up and little attitude pulses. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Throw your belly in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hold it here. Take it back to the side. Pulse to the side. Working more on your thighs right now. Good job. Keep going. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two. Now this leg's gonna go down back to second. From second, attitude back. So you're gonna lift your leg up and you're kicking somebody behind you. <laughs> back. Now's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to not just go like this, like you're kicking your own booty, but lift it up. There's a big difference. The, when you're lifting, you're gonna squeeze those muscles on the glutes. <sighs> Keep going like that. Back. Uh -huh. Great job. Sink lower again, sink and lift. And now we're gonna stay lifted on the next one. Stay up, stay up and hinge slightly forward. You're gonna lift up and pulse up, point your toes. Additive pulses, you're gonna feel your glutes. Keep going. Eight more. From here, you're gonna hold it up, extend your leg into the arbus, and now pulse it here too. Be sure your hips are square, so your bones on the hips, this little bones are gonna face down, your abs are in. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, so we're avoiding an external rotation right now. Fluttering the leg, palms can rest. Four, three, two, now flex your foot, bend your knee, and extend. Now you're engaging the hamstring. When you're flexing, you're going to work more on the hamstring. Keep the booty up. This is lifted. And we stop. We go up for eight more. Four. Three. And then we're going to add a little pump. So if you had a ball between your legs, you'll be pumping it and pump. Just like this. Little kicks. Pump. Seven, six, five, three, two, 
one. Now extend your legs straight, bring it behind the other and stretch that side. So notice how my feet are crossed. Now this side is straight. Before we go into the other side, I want you to turn around and face the bar or whatever your support is and stretch your back with your feet crossed still. And now you can leg off the arms if that feels good, maybe bend your knees and feel that deeper stretch in the back of the leg. Throw your belly in slowly, roll up, bring your shoulders back. Now walk to grab uh, the block, bowl, towel, whatever say you're using, you know, you can clean your legs. Now notice like this one can be really wide. I'm not going as wide, I'm just going to be in the middle. And now I'm going to bend the knees. Now this is very important. You need to be sure that we're not leaning forward on the knees. You want to lean back like you're sitting in a tiny chair with your abs in, squeezing that block like in the chair's pose. And if you're home and you don't have a bar, but you can have something to hold on, don't put too much pressure on it. It's just gentle, like two fingers. Okay, so let's go slow up and down. Concentrate on squeezing the block or bowl or towel. Activating your quads, in and thighs. Go very slow. Up, slow, down, slow. Up, slow, down, slow. Keep your butt straight. Your tailbone goes down. Keep an eye on your knees. Very slowly up and down. Two more times. And now I want you to do a little pulse as fast as possible. Now maybe try to lift your toes up or soften your toes. Feel the weight of your body on the walls of your feet, your heels, feel your arches, all outer edges of your feet. And now pause here and squeeze the ball. Tuck your tailbone down slightly, draw your belly in, and squeeze that block or ball or whatever so you're squeezing, even with nothing. Feel the inner thighs, outer thighs. Go lower. more and now stretch it up back up with the arms straight and shoulders shoulders are back you're going to come up on your toes and bend the knees now i'm going to round my back more like a cat pose and i'm going to stay like this and it's going to feel completely different now if you're on your tippy toes your knees are going to probably be right above your toes and that's okay but you still don't want to cover and draw in your belly in as much as you can right now Squeeze the block, go lower. Seven, six, five, feel your hamstrings. Four, three, two. Now stay down and pulse, pulse very low. Keep squeezing the block or ball. Keeping your belly in, tailbone down. Feel the stretch on your back. Now pause to squeeze it in fast with your knees. Really quick, really quick. We're almost done with this part. Sometimes there's a little earthquake in there. Shake in. Four, three, two. Now let go of your heels. And maybe let go of the arms all the way, stretching the forward fold, squeeze the block. Feel that stretch in the hamstrings. And now come on up very slowly. One breath at a time. Bring your shoulders back. Bring your arms up, reach up. Lengthen the whole body up. And now maybe one arm to the side. Oh, keep your lace your fingers and your palms up and stretch one side. This always feels good to do after that work. And then come back up to center and the other side. And then come on back up and down. And now you're gonna take the block away and we're gonna switch sides for the other leg. Or maybe we can do that next week. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, so start with your second position again. We're gonna do the same. Second to first, and then we're gonna lift the attitude ones, okay? So second position, bring your arms down, bend your knees, your heels are right above your knees, your toes are coming out. And let's start by just pulsing 
on the second position, please. And while you're doing this, just think about all the muscles that you're using, okay? So start to check on your quads, your inner thighs, your hamstrings, glutes, your back, your abs, your shoulders are down and relax. My arms are engaged. Four more, three, two, now stay down, bring your heels up and down. Just a little on the other side. Up, down, up, down. Down, keep going like this. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now let's hold it up and pulse, pulse, pulse. While you're pulsing, don't forget about your core. Now let's try to bow up this time. Let go of your hands, come up on your tippy toes, bring your arms up, reach up, reach up, reach up, relaxing the shoulders, and now relax the heels, bend the knees. Second, bring the arms back out to the sides, to the first. Second, to the first. And again, seal your inner thighs, squeeze the inner thighs, see each other. Reach up, reach up, up, and in. We get eight more of this one before we go into the attitude. One more. Three, two, attitude comes up. Second, attitude lift. Second, attitude lift. Reach. Now, the lower we go, the harder we're going to work to come up, and you're going to burn more calories. You're going to work more muscles. So keep that in mind. We're going to come to a stand soon. You get three more. Two. On this one, you're going to stay up. And now check first on your hips to sure they're not droopy or saucy. Your toes are down, your heel is up. Raise your left. Let's go up. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Take it to the side. And go up, up, and up. Four, three, two. Now bring it back down. Second position, and now it goes back. So when you're doing this, just remember you want to lift the leg up. You know, just like picking your back, a lift and up and squeezing your glutes. Then you bring your arms to the side and reach. When the leg comes up, the arm comes up. Beautiful. Sink. So the standing legs working just as hard as the other one. You don't let us go in, they're just working differently. Soften on your bar. Going. Three more. Two. Stay up on this one. And now we pulse. Turn slightly towards the bar, like 45 degrees or through your support. So now you can feel your hips being square, squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Bring your shoulders back. Lift up your chart. Chest. Your heart. Chest proud. Four. Three. Two. Now hold it here. Extend your legs straight, our legs point your toes, and then again, flatter your leg. Very good. Squeeze in your thighs towards each other. That's going to help you with the hips to stay square. Four, three, two, flex your foot, bend your knee, flex, bend, flex, bend. Squeeze. Feel the country. Squeeze like if you had a ball there. Eight more times. Stay lifted with your chest. Relax your shoulders. Keep your core engaged. Two more times. Now a little pounce, pump, pump, pump. Give the ball when it's air. 
Extend your legs straight and bring it all the way down. Beautiful. One, keep this heel going to be behind the other. Stretch your arm up and over. Stretch your hips. And then we're going to turn around and face the bar again. Keep your feet crossed and stretch your back and the back of your legs. Slowly let go of the hands, make bend the knees first if you need to. And just bending forward, send the weight forward towards your toes. Now go out there, nice and slow, one rope at a time. So our last part of the bar, I want you to walk back to the bar, and this time we're going to have the heels together, toes out. So it's going to be, again, a first position plie. But we're going to keep the back straight and squeeze the inner thighs in. Shoulders go back. So we start here. Try to lengthen that spine. And then after a few, we're gonna come up on the toes. Two more. Now I want you to come up on your tippy toes. Heels are up. And when you bend the knees, I want you to leap to send your knees forward. Now you're you're almost in a small back bend. So you're gonna slide and up and squeeze. Now you need to use the quads, the muscles above your knee cuts, and that's gonna keep your knees strong. Feel how you're squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Gently lean back, bring your shoulders back, keep the core engaged. Trust yourself, you're gonna squeeze your glutes as well. Squeeze in, go down, in, two more. And then we're gonna combine this with a thumb move. All right, so here comes the thumb move. You're gonna bend, you bend, and then you go up, and then you go up this way. Bend your knees and send your hips back, and then come on up. It's almost like you're going up and down, stretching the back of your legs. Core is engaged at all times. Reach. Doesn't that feel good? Go up and back. Four more. Three. Two. Then you're going to come back up and bring your knees in. Just quick, quick, quick. Really quick. Bring your shoulders back. Keep your back straight. Up, in. Like you're squeezing something between them. Super fast, fly with the legs. Three, two, release your heels down. And now you're gonna bring your hips in and out. Draw your belly in, little pelvic tucks. Tuck, down, up, down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hold it here, go from side to side. Side to side, you can hold into something or not hold anything. But keep the knees towards each other. Keep an eye on your toes, be sure that you can see them. Yeah, but now very little hip circles to loosen everything up. It's more like hula dancing, right? Or belly dancing. We're, we're using our muscles and our pelvic floor, our hips and our, our thighs. And now you're gonna reverse your circle. Very small, very small. Almost there. And now release. Great job. We're just gonna stretch our legs and we can go down into the mat. So bend one knee and press with the heel back and just put a little bit of pressure on your support while you're gonna press with the back heel. Feel the stretch on your hamstrings and your Calves, especially with all the uh, relevance that we did. And now extend this leg forward, hinge forward slightly. You can keep your knees slightly bent. Just go as well as it feels good to you. You can lay off your support and go down. Stretch. A lot of hamstring work. So I'm just thinking on fire right now. <laughs> Slowly come up. Little bump my head. <laughs> there we go. And now we're going to switch sides, press them, 
relax your shoulders. Press with the back heel, feel the calf. And now hinge forward, extend both legs, squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. You can go as low as it feels good to you, but avoid rolling out, press in, be sure that hip stays square, scissoring the inner thighs. Come up slowly, same way. And when you come up, you can stretch your quad. You can bend your knee and get a hold of your foot. And just squeeze your thighs in together. Maybe you can use both hands and stretch your shoulders at the same time. And you're gonna release very gently to switch sides. So if you bend your knee, you get a hold of your foot right here. And then maybe use both hands or not. You have to squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Feel the quads, hamstring, and your hip flexors. Now gently release it down. All right, and then we can go down the floor. Okay, so as you come down to the mat, let's go ahead and just take a seat, and then let's bring our feet out in front of us. As your feet come out in front of you, just place them about hip width apart, or, or uh, you're just not in front of you naturally. Kind of how you might naturally find yourself just placing your feet out, you know, just kind of watch what's going on around you. And then place your hands back behind you with your fingers facing forward. It's a reverse tabletop. Just kind of let your feet kind of wobble around and situate the weight into them. They kind of know they're in the right spot. The hips will lift all the way up. I want to get my hips, if I can, up above my knees. And then push the chest through. This is going to get the chest and the shoulders in my stretch. She did a nice job of really getting us through those arms and shoulders, triceps, biceps. Really good for turning the upper body, but keeping that delicate balance so that that weight's not launching from the shoulders. And as you make your way back down, get nice and slow. Your head will come with you, so don't even worry about that. I'm just gonna kind of scoop underneath my kneecaps. Just walk yourself up. And scoop underneath your kneecaps and lift your feet up. This is called boat pose, but we just kind of start here. This is a neutral position. You'll notice that your body can kind of just hang out, but your back is likely rounded. So if you're neutral, your rounded belly's soft. If you pull your belly in, your back chin straightens up. So push your chest up to the sky. Now that you're straight, you should be able to lift your legs, maybe halfway, like here. Some people will be able to lift higher because it will feel more natural to flexible people to go here. But maybe just go down and up a couple times. Good. Now let's stop the halfway point. So come up to half boat. Pull the toes back so your toe mounts are forward, the belly's pressing forward, the shoulders are back. Stay here if you're working on building up strength or you're like, I think I'm going to die. Just stay here, build up. If you're ready to move on, bring the arms out, and then we don't need them as much because the back is able to stay straight. If your back can't stay straight, then you may want to consider grabbing underneath those knees. For those of you that want to try a little bit more challenging, you can try straightening the legs with combat and free. Although those legs are pretty tired, so they don't want to stay under them too, at least for me. And then one, we're going to cross the ankles, place the hands onto the mat, and just come to tabletop. Place your elbows onto the mat pretty quickly when you get here, and we're going to go right where your hands once more. So tabletop, but we're on the forearms. You can do a few things. So we're going to do a cow-cat variation. So cat first, think a Halloween cat. Think a rounded back, a rounded spine. As you suck in your belly, you pull it all the way to the sky. Around and hold here. And try to continue to breathe, even though you're holding that cat pose. So pull it in and just breathe for 30 breaths. You'll notice this dynamic change between pulling the belly in and then holding it while breathing. You don't have this big range of motion anymore in the lungs. So just continue to stay calm in the breath. What can you neutralize in your neck? One more, you're almost there. Now as you release softly, it's cow pose. So let the belly come down. I'm gonna place the palms onto the mat so I can use that leverage to kind of pull back into the mat and floor as I drag my knees and forward without moving anything. Then draw your heart forward, roll your shoulders back. It will feel like your butt stick up in the air and you're in the right spot. The trick is here is you don't really need your neck. You can look up here and you can look down. You'll notice the back doesn't really switch too much. So can you neutralize your neck and push the shoulders back while drawing the heart forward? Let's take three moments. So rather than just be like hanging out here, you know, because no one's really watching, can you really actively pull those elbows back to the knees, knees to the elbows back, pull the belly in, and draw your heart forward? So we're creating space in the breath through awareness of breath. Right? And so I suppose this is a big, you know, as you slowly release now into a neutral spine, you press all the way back up into the table. Sucking the belly around the back. Now, do you notice your neck here? 
I want you to notice the back of your neck because we're going to go into the neck and the shoulder and do this pose one more time to release the tension that might be mounting around that neck and shoulders. So I love going into this space, especially after we've activated the arms and the shoulder cavity because there's a lot of energy that likes to coagulate in that ball socket joint here. And then people with neck issues and headaches and stuff like that is all revolved around that stress. You should release now to a neutral spine. Bring your elbows back down. We're not going to stay here. I'd like you to place your forehead onto the mat, right where the elbows are between them. I have this mic, so I'm just going to talk and Karen's going to demo. So once the forehead is onto the mat, then walk your arms out in front of you slowly. Okay, your core is just resting until there's almost no weight in the arms. You're just resting out. Then, yeah, you're going to feel that weight. It's pushing down into that shoulder. Okay, so your arms are out, and here's that ball socket in that shoulder. So in that ball socket right there, I want you to press the armpits down. It's going to feel like there's little scoops in that armpit because that joint's going to start to really open up. Now we're getting around that neck. Right around the top of the back here, the back of the shoulder, are going to be your trapezius muscles, the traps, right? They connect to the neck. Men oftentimes have meaty ones. Um, but women, like me, I'm one too that also, whenever I lift weights in a certain way, they activate. So they can cause tension, headaches, stress, the weight of the world on your shoulder. As you move between them, you'll notice that in between the two scapula, which are the two big bones on your back, the muscles that connect these two big bones on your back together are called the lung ones. All right, so to go deeper, you're going to get your chin to the back. So Karen is able to do that, but not many people would. So just see if that's, you're like, yeah, I can do it, but I think I'm going to pass out or die. You better, probably better go back to forehead on the mat. Eventually, the throat and the chest is on the floor here. So I'm going to kind of move my mic out of the way and go into this to see if I get that nice, beautiful stretch in the moment. So throat, eventually, or forehead. Just stay where you're at, and we'll see what this feels like. What can you surrender? Maybe it's a thought. Maybe it's these shoulders as well. Three more breaths. Now, slowly move back to your forehead if you're on your throat. Walk your elbows back and then push up into your hands. Walk your knees forward slowly as soon as you feel like you're ready. And then we're going to cross our ankles to kind of sit back, but we're going to roll to our backs here. So as you sit back, we're just going to roll down. I'm going to place my feet onto the floor here and just kind of come down. So now that you're on your back, let's draw our right knee to our chest. Interlace your fingers around that knee. And then as you do that, draw the knee to the armpit. Try to create pressure in the opposite calf. So you feel the body's nice and flat, straight to the back. And then you bring your chin down to the neck a little closer. Now relax the right foot. Then relax the shoulders. But pull the elbows and help neutralize them. And then just use the strength of the biceps and the fingertips. Got four more breaths. So as we slowly uh, restrict the blood flow to the hip, we slow it down. And then it'll allow us to then navigate some of that energy and blood through it as we open it up. So take your final breath, but hold on to your knee with your left hand. Bring the right arm up, because that way we don't let go of the floodgates yet. Gently twist the knee over to the left, but keep your gaze at your right so your right shoulder stays down. Only twist as much as your right shoulder stays down. There's really no need to go deeper. If you're very flexible here, this is my opinion. If you're flexible, just kick your leg out straight and grab the leg with the foot, and then just keep that shoulder down, though. You know, keep it down. And then this foot's on the floor. Oh, yeah. Ooh, big twist. Yeah, it just so if my shoulder lifted up, I'm gonna do it because I know I'm gonna get injured here. I can simply do it. If my shoulder lifted up though, then that weight goes out of my upper back and it dumps into my lower back here. I really want to keep this stretch around the ribs and the obliques here, right where that scapula was, that shoulder blade. Now gently come back, your knees bent, just lift it up, straighten it. Grab both knees back into your chest and then release the right leg. Take the fingers around the left knee for when you're moving elbows in. I switched up my grip, relax the feet. There's no need to keep on tight. Now, use the biceps, the fingertips, and draw the knee slowly to the left arm fingers. Your spine is flat, the neck is flat, the chin is down. Now, once you get there, you're using the strength of the fingers, and you've got that squeeze. Now the shoulders are relaxing, the neck and head relaxing. Chin is down, the back is flat. I'm just holding that compression. 
So if someone's like, hey, I need you to we tighten the tourniquet around someone. Like they're bleeding, you would tighten to slow down the blood going in there. That's what's happening here. You slow down the blood that's going into that pit. So I need you to hold it. Remember when someone's like, hey, put your finger here. That's what you're doing. Hold this hip joint. We've got our finger, we're holding it. So there's very little blood moving in there. Left like this forever, your leg would fall off. You need blood and oxygen to keep blood alive, uh, cell tissue. But it's slowing way down. So some people, the feet are falling asleep. And it eventually doesn't get so bad. Now hold onto the knee with the right hand, bring the left arm out. And now gently twist over to the right, but keep the left shoulder down so that we keep the twist in the ribs and the waist. You don't feel it lower down to the tailbone. The chin is moving towards the left shoulder just to hold it. If you went deeper, that leg just went out. I'm going to keep this one bent. This is my bad leg. And it doesn't want to go back to me. So yoga is about listening to your body. It's not about doing everything, although you might do everything. In my opinion, in my experience, you know, about 17 years of teaching yoga, I've observed a lot of things. And what I have found is people that honor their bodies will naturally go deeper and advance in their practice. And people that, you know, kind of force the issue kind of run into a lot of problems and injuries. And, and the body is trying to teach us, you know, our way. And I know this because I was one of those people. You probably were too when you started. We all are when we start. You're not, you haven't gotten very far yet, probably. But it does, it changes. So let's slowly make our way back up. And as you do so, if you pick your leg up, bend it. Let's bring up double winter moving, brings us home. So this is the transverse pull, and it kind of runs in the middle of your body, hip to hip. So reach around the waist, grab the opposite elbows, forearms, wrist, whatever you can get a hold of, that's not going to make you fall over. And then we're going to try to tame this boulder. So if I feel like a big boulder in my body, so I'm going to bring my head down to the mat, and then kind of bring my neck down. And it's going to be a little work in progress. So my chin lowers, I can feel my shoulder blades flattening, but my body's rocking around here. So this changes for me a lot, given balances, it kind of shows you about it. Then find your whatever stillness looks like for you. Bring your chin down and close your eyes. We have our final three breaths here. So we've got that, we're like, hey, put your finger here, but we've got it on both hips now. So we're squeezing everything and holding the blood flow. We're gonna get a big little bit of a surge here, just a moment. For your final breath, bring your forehead to your knees, bring your knees to your forehead. Now squeeze in your body everything as hard as you can for three. Squeeze a tiny harder for two, and then as you exhale, let it all go. Shavasana. Shavasana means corpse pose. Not difficult for you to come figure this one out. It's a dead body posture. So in dead body posture, your arms are just relaxed out to the side. The toes have fallen out to the side. And you can kind of think about maybe if you're acting on CSI today. And your first acting gig is the body on the CSI table. Um, all those are just actors. And I always think of that when I watch stuff like that. I'm like, that person is trying not to breathe. I want you to breathe, but you notice your belly is not making these big movements anymore because your lungs are so open and the pathways have opened as well. So the body system you know, kind of works in more conjunction with each other. So as you're breathing slowly, just simply take about five counts as you breathe in, five counts as you breathe out. And I'm going to move you into our hips in a sound that mimics, it is the sound of the hips, because it lines up with the energy source or the chakra, as we know, called Shvatasthana, and I talk about it quite a bit. Shvatasthana is located um, just below the belly button. You know, it's a pool of energy that's right between the two hip bones where we just were repaired. It's not a lot of our time kind of opening and toning as well. So as you're in this space, I just kind of want you to think about that area around your hips. And as you're feeling that space in your mind's eye, and with every breath you take, allow space in that area. Okay, just allow space in. And space creates surrender and abundance. Right? Because lack of space is constriction.
And as you exhale slowly, you realize that this becomes more like training one and it becomes something that is more physically dangerous. We can find it, and we find it in these moments. We get connected both in mind, in body, and in spirit. And when these three points come together, you notice it. It is easiness. It doesn't mean that life is easy. Or what we're going through or things that we're dealing with are easy. Through this mindset and through this connection between the mind, body, and the spirit, we begin to lose easy and hard. And things begin to yoke into the same. Until eventually, we land. As you take your next and final breath here in this space, allow the tips of the fingers to come together. Just gently brush them as you feel awareness and awakening in the body. We're so caught up with what we see, we translate it to the physical body, we live on the outside layers. And that sound and these movements are a reminder that we live from the inside out. And oftentimes it takes us till the end of our life to figure this out. So if we can bring in these lessons we have, we can begin to see them in our lives in another way. As your toes are wiggling around, move your wrists, move your ankles. And just feel your body kind of stirring back into life. And then when you're ready, draw the knees to your heart. You're gonna draw your knees up and just kind of rock the whole side Kind of side to side, and as you're ready, just make your way up to a comfortable seat. All right, and then we'll just kind of come together here. Anything that's comfortable for you, and as you come together, we just seal our practice with a couple breaths. So just any comfortable position, hands near your heart center. It lines up with the energy called uh, Anahata. So Anahata, Mana, Parashvatasana. These are the three that are here. This one is green, yellow, and then we have the orange. So as you think of green, draw your heart forward. And every time you see green today, I want you to think of just that heart blossoming open with the possibility of more. And maybe we've all been on our rat race so long and on our wheels that we forgot to see that life was blossoming in front of us. So thank you, the universe. Thank you, God. Thank you, Allah. Thank you for whoever you kind of bring your awareness and faith to for bringing our eyes to these things in our lives to let us see the abundance. So as you bring your hands together at your heart, you feel the compassion, lift the thumbs in place and between the eyes, the forehead, on to enlightenment. So together, let's take a final breath as you reach towards the sky and ask that we continue our journey, our inquiry, our growth into our enlightened path. And as we exhale humbly to earth, may compassion show us the way. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you, friends, for joining Karen and I on the mat for our yoga bar, and uh, we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. We were talking about this earlier. It just means the world was that you guys have shown up and that you continue to join us on the mat through these live streams and that you come back afterwards and that you check in. The one thing that um, I can ask, um, if I can, is if you leave us feedback, can you just say that you've been here or let us know that you've been here? It really helps us as we're giving you uh, content. We're already switching over this week to our video uh, library. It's an official video library that we've been working on before all of this happened. So you'll be able to join in on that and have access to a growing uh, array of videos that are done to yoga, we have bar, we have sculpt, we have uh, meditations, we have workshops and all that kind of stuff going on. Also how to's, there's a lot of like posture breakdowns and what's the proper technique um, around certain postures and asanas and the warriors and sometimes the deities that surround us as well. So be looking forward to those and uh, we're going to also be putting another clip on here after this about some of the um, equipment that we're going to be using for some of these special classes. So I just want to say thank you again for joining us and um, we love you very, very much. And just remember to uh, check in and we'll see you on the mat. Bye everybody. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Who's here? Oh, it's sideways. I hope this wasn't sideways. Okay. Anyway, I love you guys. Bye. It's sideways. I hope it was. All right. Thank you again, you guys, for joining us. Until next time.